Good afternoon, Ollie Packer. Thank you very much for joining us for this conversation. Uh, for the benefit of our, uh, our viewers, uh, I, I will introduce us. Uh, my name is Toby Lowe. I'm a visiting professor of public management at the Center for Public Impact. And I'm very pleased to be able to be in conversation today with uh, Oli Pekker Heinenden, who is Director General of the Finnish Education Agency. What was the purpose of the Innovation Center? Why, why did you set it up? Well, I would say that behind it was the kind of understanding that uh, we have moved into the phase in the Finnish education system where we kind of saw that it's not kind of enough that we try to from top down to kind of do the development work and kind of give grants and fees and kind of uh, regulatory measures and information steering uh, that we have to be able to increase the kind of adaptability capacity of the schools and not only the schools but actually from the viewpoint of the learner, the child, and kind of then involving also the kind of whole uh, kind of growth environment of the child. And, and, and that is something that we need a new approach. And, and we kind of didn't have the view that what it might be. So we kind of thought that we'll create an experiment of an experiment in a way that, that the kind of create an organizational structure that is in itself an experiment. And that was how the Innovation Center was created. Grant, so if I understand correctly, the, the Innovation Center is a, is, a, is a mechanism to enable the education system in Finland to uh, innovate and experiment. Exactly. Yes. Great. Um, so, uh, uh, could you tell me a bit more about how the innovation center works, and a bit about the the context that you work in? So, uh, in some of the material that I've seen, your your team describes the uh, describes. It as saying you're trying to build joint understanding and joint discussion amongst a kind of education ecosystem in Finland. So uh, who's part, what, what kind of people and organizations do you see as part of this ecosystem, this joint understanding and joint discussion? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the kind of a systems perspective has been very important in the work of the of the center and in that as the kind of actors and and and, and kind of uh, shareholders we see that uh, of course the teachers the school principals other personnel of in school have been very, very important, and the kind of muni municipality decision makers is, is important. But also involving the, the parents and also actually the learners, the, the children in the discussion. And then we have also kind of widened the scope so that the different other professionals that work with the same children, for example, social and health services, um, the youth sector, and also the kind of uh, other kind of voluntary organizations that work closely with those children. They are all the actors, actually, that we have tried to um, kind of bring together to see the, what are the challenges that they see that are the big challenges in their work. 
And and then there's another layer, which is the question that that when we're talking about a kind of systems level, is the question that how we can uh, get the national level and the local level more close to each other to kind of talk the same language and have the kind of intimacy that could make the trust uh, to be kind of growing in, in that system. Thank you. I will come back to the the national level later because I think that that work is particularly fascinating. But um, uh, kind of think, looking at the the local system that you were describing there, the, mun- the municipalities, the schools, the voluntary organisations, the other professionals, the parents, the the, the children themselves. Um, but, so, as I understand it, your role has your role in the innovation centre has been to bring all of these people together to support their experimentation with whatever challenges they see. Right. So, what? What does the Innovation Centre do to support that experiment, experimentation? Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, uh, when we have reached the, the, the local level, uh, we, 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 we make that contact, not saying that we have something that we want to offer them uh, as a kind of a solution, but we're saying that do they see that they have some challenges that they would need help with? And, and if the answer is yes, then we have kind of uh, been part of the, of the process. Um, and what we do, what the first thing is that we bring actually all the actors that I just told together. And, and that's already a big step quite often, although that those people might kind of do their job and live in the same community, it still is the que- question that different professionals might not have kind of talked with each other before, although they are working with the same children. Mm-hmm. And then the question what the center does is to it facilitates a discussion that is there on the local level um, a shared view that what the challenge could be that that what, what is actually the problem and is there a problem that they can be kind of they, they can agree on that that is a major issue Mm -hmm. and that discussion is very important because quite often there are kind of how would i say smaller problems which are kind of more profession or viewpoint specific but once you continue the discussion you end up that there is a bigger problem behind the smaller problems and maybe still a bigger problem behind the big bigger problem and and then we come close actually to purpose and 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 that's the thing that that that's the kind of facilitated process that the uh center facilitates and, and and helps with and then we kind of take the process forward that we support actually the the kind of finding or dealing with the possible solutions that are created on the local level that that give us kind of how would i say form to the process and again kind of um, build trust in the system that that, or in that process so that everybody who is involved can rely that certain kind of rules are followed. Mm-hmm. So it's a kind of a safe environment to express yourself and maybe let go of something that you have earlier seen that it's kind of your professional view and you will not give it up, but to find the common ground 
that is so, always needed. And, and so it sounds to me like, so in other contexts, I've heard that role that you described of kind of creating that safe environment for learning together. I've heard that role called a learning partner. Is that, is that how you would understand the role that the Innovation Centre plays? Yes, I would say that that's um, that, that that's yeah, that that's a a good way of of putting it. Um, another way is putting it is to kind of describe it as a kind of a trusted referee. Nice. That that it's somebody who who everybody kind of learns to give the authority to of the process, not the content, not the solutions, but they are somebody that, that can be trusted. And it's actually also an, a, 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 a third way of describing it is that it's pretty much about creating a space, a kind of a mental space. The Japanese are talking about the concept bar which is actually a, a kind of a trustworthy, safe base where everybody respects each other. There are no hierarchies there and, and everybody is kind of equal and valued. And that's also an important element of it. And so what are the kinds of things that the Innovation Centre team has done to create that kind of bar space, that to be that trusted learning partner? Well, I would say that it's, it's kind of pretty much the asking the questions uh, and, 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 and kind of uh, setting the rules for the dialogue to happen and and by that i mean that uh it, it's in the beginning it's more about understanding it, it, it's not there's not the idea that now we must find an agreement but it's about understanding different views and making sure that the diversity of views are present and and then to as I said, the trusted referee's idea is that everybody can play in a way by the same rules and have the room to express themselves. So um, it, it's pretty much that kind of, of facilitating uh, capabilities that are needed of the, of the people. Uh, and then I would say that one thing that is important is also the kind of, how would I say, uh, to in a way, kind of structure the process, in a way, kind of document it so that it holds together. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes it's said that a hostage negotiator, the most important thing for a hostage negotiator is the thing that uh, you always must keep what you promise, no matter what. And that's the same thing here, that although it might look in one phase of the pro process that, that that might be the end solution or end outcome of all this, uh, still you kind of make sure that you follow the path to the end as promised. Quite often during the last years, the, the issues that the local um actors have taken up have something to do with actually well-being when we talk about the the kind of well-being and and how kind of certain children um have it have a tough time at home and and still in our system all oh, there there are a lot of experts that work with these children every day Nobody really kind of sees them as a whole. And, and there are, for example, experiments with the idea that, that in certain schools, and, and that's kind of an experiment of itself, that uh, the schools have arranged a breakfast 
for all the children coming in. And the idea for the breakfast is not mainly about eating the breakfast, but it's the question that there are kind of teachers eating the breakfast together and kind of seeing that what is the situation with each child? Because mm-hmm. being a, a, a qualified teacher, you can notice in the morning if there is something wrong. So kind of from the very early hours of the school day to then um, connect with those children and kind of have that talk that is there something wrong and what could we do to help that and kind of through that uh, take care about those children and not just let them drift drift through the whole day kind of maybe having a lot of trouble there and ending up as a kind of a problem and and uh, the outcome is entirely different in those approaches well so that sounds like a kind of an experiment with like relational practice with how how do you build an effective relationship with the person you're trying to serve so that you see them as a kind of, as a whole human being. Is that? Yeah, it is. It is. And the, um, the, again, with, uh, in, in a bunch of the amazing material that your team has shared with us, um, you describe gathering data on the effects of those experiments. So what does that data tell you and how have you enabled that data to uh, support learning throughout the different bits of the education system? Uh, But the data is gathered mostly for the use of the of the local actors. So it's kind of it's to their use and uh, and to kind of improving their own um, actions and, and collaboration. So we do not gather that data on, on, on the national level, not kind of other data, but kind of seeing that how the experiments have gone to evaluate our own kind of uh, actions and, and how we have succeeded and what there is to be done better. Uh, but, but otherwise, it, it, and, and that's kind of part of the Finnish administrational structure that the municipalities have a lot of autonomy. And we definitely don't want to kind of break um, that balance. Nice. And I noticed one of the things that the uh, evaluation reports of this as a kind of work overall says um, that current evaluation models are inadequate for understanding of the kind of creative processes that you have supported. So kind of what have you learned about how evaluation needs to change in order for it to do the job that you need it to do? And and there's quite often the idea that actually we have in the national level, we have the answer already, and then we give you the money to implement it. And that's called development. Um, uh, and and quite often, what, what is the evaluation process bluntly said is that then we look at the kind of application uh, and reporting that comes from the local level, whether it kind of meets all the requirements of the legislation. So it's kind of legal, legal evaluation. It doesn't actually have time to look at what has been done in practice. Uh, and that's a bit kind of shameful to say it, but, but that's the way it has been. And it's not that, how would I say, that we have known the right answer on the national level, and then we, as the project is done, then we say that checked, that's, we've done our part. That, that's not the aim. The aim is to increase the, the capacity, the resilience on the local level. 
and that's a kind of a um, kind of a quality um, and and competence that remains there, and that's the final aim. Nice. So, if I'm hearing you correctly, kind of you're saying that evaluation needs to serve the purpose of local learning rather than to checking up from the national scale about whether you did the things you said you were going to do. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's a, it, it doesn't kind of sound as a kind of a, kind of a big change, but it's kind of revolutionary if you compare it to the traditional way of doing things. Excellent. Um, and so uh, I kind of, if I understand things correctly, uh, I th I'm hearing that the Innovation Centre is quite unusual in, in innovation practice. In that, am I right in thinking that the Innovation Centre doesn't try and take the results of local experiments to scale? I to say, okay, this has worked in one place. Now other, other parts of Finland should copy what was learned there. We should take, we should take that successful thing to scale. Am I right in thinking that the Innovation Centre doesn't do that? Um, uh, and we have, from the very beginning, starting with, started with the idea that let's forget scaling. Because I think there are actually many reasons why it fails. One thing being that uh, as we are talking about not kind of solutions that come from the outside, but we are talking about solutions that are connected to the people and their relationships with each other. And, and you can't kind of scale, you can't move that from one place to another because it's bound to the people. It's their solution. And it's unique for that reason, because we as humans are unique and the context is always unique. And, and so it's kind of their problem. And for that reason, it's also their unique way of, of dealing with it. And another thing is that pretty often that if you try to kind of, uh, if you try to uh, scale an outcome, of course, the attitude of not invented here is very strong. And it's kind of natural and a reaction that if you haven't gone through the learning process with others, you're not kind of ready to take that kind of outcome into use because, again, it's bound to the people and, and their chains in the process. It's not, the th it's not kind of an technology that has been changed through that process, but it's the people themselves who have changed as a kind of a solution to the problem. Nice. So if I'm hearing you correctly, scaling is failing, right? Definitely. <laughs> it is. It's a good way of putting it, yes. And so if you don't seek to scale what's been learned locally, how do you share learning between the different places because presumably what is learned in one place is relevant to another place yeah. so uh, what's the kind of role of the innovation center in in kind of spreading learning between places yes uh, it, it's very important uh, it, it's a very important question and i i think there are two things that can be done the first one is that uh, in these processes, we try to create kind of networks where there's kind of uh, collegial sharing between people in, for example, different municipalities. So they are kind of following and sharing each other's examples that what is done. And that might kind of create um, an understanding and also an interest in what's been done. And another thing is that there's the possibility to tell about the process that was used. 
So uh, it, it's not the outcome, but it's how those people there got to an outcome. And, and that is something that you can utilize also in, in other places. So um, it sounds like you're, you, you're kind of building a, a, like a national learning infrastructure between places. Is that a way to characterize it? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. It's the, um, the, the whole idea is actually to create different learning loops inside the education system. Uh, I think it's very, very vital that the, the smallest loops are very strong because that's, that's actually the fastest way also to adapt to change. And then there are certain issues that when we come, for example, to the issue of how to, how to kind of make sure that the equality on the national level is a reality, uh, then you have to have a, a kind of a learning loop that connects the local level and the national level. And that's, a, that's an, an other big issue because I've been working, well, well I was uh, five, ministers, five, five years to Minister of Education and Science, and, and I, I remember already at that time that um, when I was meeting with other ministers of education, there were always kind of great strategies, national education strategies. But when we kind of started talking frankly about the reality, there was this kind of cemetery of failed national education strategies. That, that the implementation was the issue that wasn't functioning. And, and there was a clear reason for that. That was the reason that the national level and the local level, where the most important things are done, they were too far from each other. They didn't know each other's reality. Mm. And, and kind of learning loop is the issue that kind of is needed for that uh, intimacy to be there, also the kind of which gives possibility for the credibility and the reliability, which are the three elements of trust that is the kind of glue that keeps the system together. And so I love the way that you describe the kind of national local intimacy. That's, that's such an evocative word. Um, so what what have you done uh, and what have you learned about how to create that national local intimacy and how i suppose i'm asking how can the national learn well from the local mm. well first thing is actually to bring actors together that, that that's kind of very 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 central um then I think that it's very important that you also have kind of issues, kind of tools that around which you can work together. They are, they are kind of like campfires that, that you gather around. And in the Finnish education system, for example, the, the core curriculum is such a campfire. Because the way we do it is that it's not something that we in the agency kind of write there and, and then send it to the local level, but it's done together. So we take the different shareholders, actors together, and they together write it. Wow. And 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 it's a um, it's a kind of a there are many benefits on that, um, but that also means that then we know that it is something that is meaningful 
on the local level and it's kind of also um, it's possible to implement it and once we do it together it is we also get a shared language because they are pretty often quite abstract terms for example that you have on on on, on core curriculums what what are the aims of, of teaching and learning uh, then you create a shared meaning with that process and the implementation phase becomes so much more easier because on the local level, you know what it is. Well, you know what it will be when the final decision is done. So uh, you have already kind of committed yourself to, to kind of implement it in practice. And so, again, can I just check that I'm hearing this correctly, that the the national education agency kind of functions as almost like as a convener of localities to create national level education policy in this, to, the, the, for example, the national curriculum. So it, 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 is that how you would view the agency's role in that as a, as a convener? Yeah, I, I would say that that's a, 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 a fair way of, of saying that how we're doing it. It has not always been that way, that we have definitely had the phase when when it was more kind of top down. Um, but during the last kind of core curricular rounds, we have found that um, it, it doesn't get implemented. There was this joke that what's the best place to hide 500 euros it's between the book of core curriculum <laughs> that it it kind of nobody opens it and 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 then we are kind of doing a bad job yeah uh, and for that reason we had to kind of create a, a a new way of of doing it and it's also because teachers um they are clever people. They are professionals. They have the views. They 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 know their stuff. And and why wouldn't we kind of utilize their abilities? And they are kind of very willing to to give that energy on on developing their own work. See, and so th th this brings me to. Uh... To, to something else that I saw in some of the material that that your team sent through, as uh, you, you described, kind of one of the the challenges of working in this way, um, as helping leaders at all levels let go of the idea that they should have tight top down top down control over what is happening in their organizations or their ministries or whatever so how have you tried to help leaders let go of the idea that they should have this tight control that's a, that's a very 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 tricky issue cause uh, still we have that kind of heroic leader model very strongly that the leader is the one who has the right answers, who who kind of come comes to the scene and 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 sees that what is the problem and and kind of makes the decisions and kind of solves the saves the world and rides to the sunset, uh, and that's the leaders that pretty much in our societies we we'll still see that how it should be and the kind of humble leadership which doesn't mean that it would be kind of how would i say a leadership without any will uh, uh is something new that we're just kind of discovering and finding the models for it it's pretty difficult to have those models because that type of leadership, it doesn't put the, uh, the uh, leader in the spotlight. But actually, the leadership position is more a kind of a 
safe guardian and, and a kind of a, a, a process steering and capacity building and servant role to the purpose mm. that is being served. And, and, and what we are doing is, again, in this sense, the best way of doing it is showing that there are kind of other ways of doing things that the traditional way. Um, and experimenting on these issues also, doing things together uh, with, with, with kind of other leaders and, 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 and showing uh, that it can work and that you can reach good outcomes with the other approach. Sometimes the issue is how we see time used in the process. And and, and quite often the criticism I hear towards this kind of an approach we just talked about is that the decisions and the learning, they take so much time. And they do take time. Uh, and you have to reserve that time. But on the other hand, when I'm looking at situation where the kind of traditional top-down decisions are made, which too often fail, and when you kind of have those failing moments, many one after another, that definitely takes time. And it also <laughs> ruins the kind of kind of trust and hope and, and kind of legitimacy of the decision making as a whole. Yeah, I, I always like the expression, uh, if you want to go fast, travel alone. If you want to go yeah. far, travel together. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Um, yeah. And the kind of various things you're saying there that kind of lead me on to the like questions about reporting and accountability practices because again this is when we're talking about these alternative ways of working people always ask well how does how does accountability work then how, do, how, how does reporting work so um your team describe how you've changed the way that uh, localities traditionally report to the agency and say so you've replaced that traditional report uh, like top down, like top down demanded reporting with a uh, multi stakeholder dialogue. Mm -hmm. So, can you say a little bit more about what that multi stakeholder dialogue process looks like as a way of kind of creating accountability? Mm. Well, it's it's all about kind of creating or, or uh, spreading the leadership and the accountability widely in the system um, uh, and and as we were talking about that if there's kind of one on the top that decides uh, then you create a kind of dependency that one is very very capable and the others are actually not capable at all uh, and, and and that means that there is one person who overestimates his or her skills, and there is a lot of people who underestimate their skills. And and for that reason, the the, the spreading the the um, accountability in the system is essential. And, and then we come also to the question that how you how you measure success. Um, and and it. Is I would say that in, in, in the Finnish experiment or, or culture in the education sector, um, we have quite a good starting point there because we have never really favored systems that are based, for example, on testing or test results and, and, and kind of measuring school performance uh, so that then you kind of bind the financing, for example, to that kind of measurement. Um, we don't have that culture at all. We, and we haven't had it uh, in, let's say, in 50 years time in Finland. So uh, that kind of helps 
a lot. Called because the school teachers and the and the principals they are used to uh, having quite a large autonomy themselves. But then we come to the issue, um, which is the challenge in the Finnish system, that what does it mean that you have autonomy? That does autonomy mean that you can do whatever you like and you don't have to care about anybody else? Um, and, and, and that's something that we have been trying to communicate a lot, that... Uh, when you have autonomy, it actually means that you are very dependent on what others in the system with autonomy are doing. That because it's a system with autonomous actors, when one thinks something, it affects the others. So there is this kind of dependency there. Actually, if you would be an actor, who cannot decide on any issues, then you are entirely undependent on anybody else. Because then you do just what you're asked to do. Mm -hmm. And that's it. There is nobody else there. But once you, are, uh, you have a lot of autonomy, then it's an other issue that, that then uh, you have to connect to the others and do decisions uh, that take into consideration the others' viewpoints also. And, and then it's important that those different autonomous actors also come together to have that dialogue that are we going to the right direction? And that's, that's kind of important. It's not that you have kind of, um, kind of numbers that you can look at and say that now this is uh, the target that we were um, having, but but to kind of cause you, you cannot kind of have that kind of targets when when the world is changing around you. It, it's it, it's it's kind of evolving process. But then it's the question that do you see that you're together with the other actors, you're going to the same direction, and that seems to be the right direction. So, again, I just want to check my understanding of this. So the, the multi-stakeholder dialogue you're talking about, is it? it's a form of kind of peer-to-peer -peer accountability. Is that? It, it is, and, and that's, it's a very good, good point that then you create a system that holds itself cause that kind of peer-to-peer -peer responsibility, um, how would I say, it, 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 it's a fabric that kind of is resilient. Mm. And, and that's, the, yeah. Uh, and so uh, uh, two things I'm really curious about then in this context. What's the, the content of those dialogues? So what information do they use do those kind of peer to the, those peers uh, talk about when they're trying to decide are we going in the right direction together? So that's mm -hmm. question number one. And, and yeah. question number two is: um, are, are there sanctions that people put on each other associated with that peer-to-peer -peer accountability, or is it a kind of um, uh, like it has to be unanimous decision making, or what happens if one of the actors goes, "No, I'm, we're going to do our own thing over here." So yeah, what's the co what's the content of the conversations? What information is required, and what's the kind of sanctions around accountability? Around mm -hmm. that? What comes very important is, as I said, that we don't measure in the traditional way, kind of as a way of, of management. But of course, we do research and, and we do kind of surveys that, and, and we want to know that what is the situation. Um, and, and of course, that type of material is something that we are using. And, and, and definitely we are seeing nowadays much, much more kind of processes where actually what is done 
on the local level that there is also a a kind of evidence gathering uh, part as part of that process. So kind of action research uh, way of doing things. And, and then it's a thing that, again, also the kind of research uh, learns at the same time as the kind of people on the local level create the solutions. Mm. And, and, and then you pretty much end up kind of also evaluating how f- uh, well functioning the process has been. Uh, we no, we don't have kind of sanctions there, but what comes up is that you start to you you start to kind of create uh, a, a a way of increasing the professional quality. And, and the kind of professional capacity that it, it is kind of a you create the system in a way creates its own measures that what is a kind of a quality of doing things that is seen fit in the system so it's it's more kind of a how would I say, a, 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 a social control in a way, if you want to put yeah, it yeah, that yeah. way. So the, the kind of, it develops kind of shared norms and understandings about this is the professional yeah. way to behave around here. This yeah, is how we exactly. behave together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just kind of taking the, this, this point about um, kind of multi-stakeholder dialogue and like how you know what success looks like up to the to the point of the innovation center like how how do you know whether the innovation center itself has been successful and, and how do you learn as an organ, as a as as, an, as a unit mm. Mm. well of course it's a question that that the as i said the center itself has been a an experiment and 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 so we have of course also done uh, external evaluations of the of the activities of the of the center actually two times in the middle and when we are right now in the middle of a of an evaluation process where all the different actors on the local level and everybody who's been involved in these uh, experiments uh, are kind of also their experiences are gathered and, and, and pulled together. Um, and that's, of course, an important evidence for us um, to see that how well it's done our, uh, or, or how, how well it's done kind of uh, its job. Uh, of course, then there is the kind of direct feedback that we get, which is, um, it might be kind of partial, but, um, when you are getting kind of very strong um, opinions that people want to kind of bring up, it, there's a message there. And that's what we've been seeing from the local level, a lot of that happening. And, and, and we get a lot of messages saying that this is exactly the things that we would like the agency to be doing more. Um, and so it, it sounds like you've learned quite a lot about how performance management and accountability processes either support or get in the way of um, a, a culture and practice of learning and experimentation. So uh, um, uh, if I heard you correctly, you say something, basically a payment by results mechanism gets in the way of learning. Did, did I hear you say that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so what else have you learned about kind of performance management and accountability and how that can either support or get in the way of learning? 
Well, I think we have learned, and, and, and that's something that um, is a challenge for the whole, um, how would I say, the whole kind of uh, public sector structure, starting from the ministries and the, and the kind of government level, is that still there is, for example, in Finland, there is a kind of result uh, oriented management or management by performance which uh, which uh, it, it's not functioning it, it, it's kind of it, it's outdated to the circumstances where we live together um, and 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 it, it kind of uh, it, it sh falls short in so many ways um it, it kind of frustrates um it undermines the capacity and and it kind of uh thinks that it knows the kind of answers years ahead uh and and it doesn't and 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 we should kind of rebuild the system entirely and and i i like to see that we would kind of replace the the kind of management by performance model to a kind of capacity building management model cause that is the thing that really matters that are the different offices or or centers uh, or institutions are there, do they have the capacity to deal with difficult challenges? And also that do they have the capacity of doing things together with other actors? Because I, I think that that's the only sustainable way of having a, 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 a kind of a well-functioning public service for the future. Um. And so through all of this, so the, the kind of three years so far uh, of the Innovation Centre and kind of all your other experiences, what have you learned about what's the role of a national government agency in enabling effective responses to complexity? What, what is it that national agencies should do? Hmm. I think we should help the local level to succeed because that's where the learning happens that's where the learners are that's where the teachers are and everything important is happening there and and it's our task to make those people succeed and and that means that we have to understand the local level we have to be in connection, in dialogue with the local level. And then we have to transform our kind of steering thinking to methods that are more kind of bottom-up approaches than top-down approaches. Um, and, 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 and then, of course, then we are more kind of enablers. And of course, one important aspect is also to kind of create trust in the system, to feed the trust all the time. Because there's, there's a kind of a, like the social media and the kind of very controversial discussion about education policies these days, it, it, it is kind of ruining trust all the time. And if we let that happen, you kind of ruin the possibility for any um, safe discussion and dialogue. And, and for that reason, we, we have to be able to, to bring people together to hear uh, the, the, what, what is happening. And, and, and that's... Uh, that's very, very important when something um, happens 
that uh, is negative because um, in our kind of discussion culture, when something negative happens, for example, in a school, there's in immediately a kind of a rush of social media messages and, and kind of media coverage and then pressure to the, na- to the decision makers that what are you going to do that this will not na- happen again? And, and that pressure means that the politicians, they have to kind of do measures immediately. In that process, I've seen it so many times that nobody has had the time to ask that what really happened and why. Um, and, and, and we have to be able to kind of take that time and see that was there really something unethical or unacceptable behavior that needs to be tackled? Or was it just kind of something that no matter what, you could have not prevented it? But if we kind of entirely do new restrictions on the local level, that means that the local people in the future, they will use more of their time reporting back up, which is time of the things that they should be doing. And that kind of creates a, a, a negative circle that it's our job to try to hinder that happening. Amazing. So if, if, as you say, the role of the kind of the national level agency is around, is it as an enabling one for the local level, what does that mean for policy making? Hmm. What what kinds of things should a should should uh, national governments be making policy about? Hmm. Well, I think uh, what what is important is that uh, of course that you're clear uh, about the kind of directions that you want to um, safeguard or strengthen on the national level, and you're clear with the direction where you want to go. But then the issues that are concerning more the how things are done uh, should be left on the expertise where there's the best knowledge and expertise about the local circumstances and the and the issues involved. So I think this kind of division of of labor is is kind of very very important to be to be understood. And and of course that's uh, that, then we come to the issue that what's the kind of government's role and what's the parliament's role. It still is the case that pretty often we, on the national level, we discuss actually about details because they might be kind of discussion-wise sexy issues. Uh, But then, for example, thinking about um, really measures that make difference those issues, uh, there aren't kind of often pretty, or, or often we don't have functioning processes for that kind of uh, a discussion. The way that our budgets, for example, national budgets are are built, that they're built of kind of thousands of statutes. And, and the discussion is that will you have kind of uh, 10,000 more, 10,000 euros more on this statute this year than last year. Not what you're dying to do, kind of on a wider context with the uh, with the um, taxpayers' money. Thank you, Oli Becker. That is some really, I think, insightful thinking on 
the relationship between kind of national and local there. Um, just to wrap up now, is um, is there anything that you feel is in kind of important to say around this that we haven't talked about, or is there anything that you would like to ask me about any of those things? Well, I think there would be a lot of things that I would like to ask you, because uh, uh, as I see, we th this is a learning process, uh, and, and this is uh, I see that we are still in a quite early phases of making a culture change. So, so we don't kind of have very strong, um, how would I say, words on terms and patterns described that that would kind of support going to that direction, that there is kind of so strong culture with the earlier way of doing things and a lot of kind of work and procedures and ways of measuring it, the kind of left hemisphere stuff is, is there kind of, uh, very strongly present, and and I feel that we're more talking about the right hemisphere issues, where where you're more talking about the relationships, where you we, you're more talking about the nuances, you're more talking about not only about the the things that you can see and measure, but things that are have value, and and those are pretty often things that are not so easily put in words and, and, and kind of, you, you cannot categorize them. And, and for that reason, the thing that <laughs> definitely I would like to kind of talk a lot of with you uh, as you've been kind of creating this, the model also with the human learning system that, that to kind of, uh, that, that's exactly what, what I think we're needing. And, and, and I definitely would like to kind of learn a lot about that concept. Well, well um, uh, maybe we will do that as a, as a part two of the interview uh, or our conversation rather. Um, but for, for this point, I would just say um, thank you so much for your time and sharing all the th amazing things you've learned uh, with me and with the uh, various audiences for this uh, video.